When we first looked at circuits, we mentioned that there are two types of circuits, DC circuits and AC circuits. And we said that at some point we're going to talk about AC circuits later on. Well, now is later, so let's look at what these, uh, what happens with these. Just to kind of review, a DC circuit is a circuit which has a voltage that's constant in time. And if we were to plot this, it would look like a straight line, not rising, not, not increasing, nor decreasing. And this causes the, the current to be constant in time as well. And the big, biggest source of constant voltage that we've seen, we've played with in lab or in the real world, uh, happens to be batteries. We get constant voltages out of batteries. Now if we actually look at AC circuits, AC circuits will oscillate in time. And they have a pretty specific way that they oscillate. And that way that they oscillate is in a sinusoidal manner. They start off at zero, go up, down, up, down in a sinusoidal manner. And we'll see that the equation that governs this tends to follow the form of sine of omega t. t is the time. We have some sinusoidal pattern. And we know that the angular frequency, or the frequency of oscillation, is given by this term omega. And most of you may not be aware of it, however you may, uh, that the most common form of oscillation, or this AC circuit, uh, AC circuits that we have, or AC voltages and currents, is the stuff that we plug in in our house. The little plong prongs in the wall that you plug in, that is an AC circuit. And the repetition rate for it is normally around 60 hertz if you live in the US. If you live in uh, Europe, that actually is a 50 hertz cycle. So it cycles 50 ups, 50 down, downs in one second. If you're in the US, it's 60 ups and 60 downs. And that's actually one of the reasons why appliances won't work over there is because of the oscillation. But you may ask, how does the voltage and the current actually relate to each other? Well, in AC circuits, we have this oscillating pattern that goes up and down, as we said. Start at zero, go up, go down, go up, go down, so on and so forth. However, if we actually look at the current, the current doesn't necessarily actually have to follow the same up and down pattern. It will be related, most likely, but you'll notice that when we look at these, the peak of the voltage, and this guy right here, doesn't coincide with the peak for the current. So we say that there's this thing called a phase shift between the two of them. And this phase shift, mathematically, is represented um, at, in the trig function. And we'll show you what this looks like. So if we look at this, uh, the actual mathematics behind, or in describing this uh, blue line, the sinusoidal voltage line, we get V is equal to some peak value that it'll hit, V naught, times sine of omega t. And omega, again, is the rate that it oscillates back and forth. So how quickly does it oscillate? If we look at the current, the current, however, is going to have some, some value. It starts off with some max value, I naught, times sine of omega t. However, you'll notice we're going to add in this extra term. And this extra term is called the phase shift. And mathematically, what it looks like is the shift between one peak and the next. So if we look at the low peaks, the, the troughs, we'll see that there's this shift of phi between the two, and that's showing up as this phase shift. One final note on the phase shift is depending on which is leading, is the current going first or the voltage peaking first? In this case, the voltage is peaking first, and then the current, and we'll say that the voltage leads the current in this case. However, if we were to have the current peak before the voltage, we would call that, or we'd say that the voltage lags the current.